All right, welcome everyone to today's edition of the uh, Platform Backend Functional Group Update. There's one thing I'm gonna do a little bit differently this edition and previous edition, and that is that I'm gonna start off with a little uh, meet the team inspired by Sean, our discussion engineering manager, who did the last, uh, who did the same thing in his last iteration. I'm gonna start with myself. That's just because I'm doing this in order of joining GitLab. Uh, and then we'll have some time to get to the more interesting members of the team. Uh, but yeah, let's start with myself. My name is Dao Man. I'm the engineering manager for the platform team. I live in Utrecht, the Netherlands, and I joined GitLab a little bit over three years ago. Um, and relevant to kind of my, my job in GitLab is the fact that I am maintainer of the backend of GitLab CE and E, one of the many, but that means that I'm one of the people who can merge merge requests right into the master branch. Um, everyone in the GitLab team, in the GitLab backend team is a reviewer. Everyone is encouraged to review each other's code as much as possible, uh, but there's a slightly more select set of people who can actually merge stuff in. And on top of that, I'm also a maintainer of GitLab shell, which is also a backend component of the GitLab application. So that's me, and now I'd like to go to the first team member of the team, who is Ruben. Ruben, would you like to take a moment to uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do at GitLab and in your personal life? Uh, sure thing. Thanks, Dawi. Uh, well, my name is Ruben Davila. Uh, I'm based on Lima, Peru, and I have uh, almost two years and three months in GitLab. In GitLab. So I recall I joined a team where when we were like 50 people right now we have grown a lot we are more than 200 i think uh, so really happy to be part of this awesome team uh always learning new things every day uh, so i am a backend developer um, mostly i work on the gitlab ee project by uh, i have also done some work on the gitlab ce project uh, also, I am a maintainer of some internal applications like the license app, uh, also the customers app or the subscription portal, which is the place where our customers purchase our subscriptions. Uh, well, there is always work to do in the customers portal, giving our customers have a special requirements sometimes in order to purchase our subscriptions. And also our sales team always needs some help regarding our internal tools or with some issues that customers report to them. Uh, so yeah, in my free time, I mostly enjoy going for a walk with my dogs. I have two dogs. And it's a nice time where usually the solution to the problems comes to my mind while I walking with my dogs. So yeah, that's me. Uh, I think James, are you there? Thanks, Ruben. Uh, James just messaged me to say that he's not going to be able to join right now, so I'll uh, quickly go over his um, his slide. Uh, James Lopez is one is a senior developer on the platform team. He's based in A Coruña in Spain, and he joined um, a little bit over two years ago. He maintains Takeoff, which is a tool that we use to deploy to GitLab.com. He's a merge request coach, which means that he helps out community members uh, get their contributions to GitLab ready and, and you know ready to go into GitLab with our uh, requirements for spec coverage, documentation, all of this stuff. Um, he's an expert of the import ex expert on the import export feature, which allows you to transfer a GitLab repository from one machine, uh, one GitLab instance to another by exporting it into an archive, uh, which contains the repository itself, the issues, the merge request, everything else, which can then be imported into another uh, GitLab instance, maintaining you know the relationship between all of those objects. He's also an expert of the cycle analytics feature, and he's an expert on the whole release and deployment process for GitLab.com. Uh, he is a release manager right now, and he has been for the last couple months, and he has done that job a lot over the two years that he's been at GitLab. It's kind of a rotating function for context. So that's James. Uh, next up is Tiago, who also mentioned that he was not going to be here because, as it says down at the bottom, he's currently snowboarding in Andorra. So I'm sure he's very sad that he wasn't able to join the FGU. Uh, he's a junior developer on the team. He also lives in London. He used to live in Portugal, and but he uh, moved there um, about half a year ago, I think. And he is an expert of the repository mirroring feature as well as import export. Next up is James Edwards Jones. James, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, another developer from London. So um, we, we often meet up in London. So Tiago and I worked on Mixicals over the last uh, month, 
on the more GitLab internal side. Um, on GitLab itself, I've recently worked on stuff with LFS, like a variety of issues for that. Um, uh, bring uh, protected tags, and I've been working on restrictions to, for protected branches, so you to control who has the ability to unprotect a branch. And I've been working on group SAML, so that's um, SAML for GitLab.com on a per group level instead of for the whole instance. So th those are the things I tend to get pinged on, but I've, I work on all sorts of things and just can never remember what I've worked on. Um, but that, yeah, and in my spare time, um, like a couple of days a week, I'll go to the gym. So I'll often be working more in a US time zone. Um, but apart from that, it's, yeah, just general stuff. And Thank you, James. Is... Bob, you're up. Yeah, so uh, I'm also a developer on those team. Uh, I live in Belgium, and I, uh, that's quite close to where the, all of the people in the Netherlands are, so we often meet up there. But I'm definitely up for joining you, you all in, uh, in London once as well. Um, I've recently worked a lot on the external authorization uh, feature in uh, GitLab EE. Uh, I think that's a premium feature. So um, it allows um, more fine-grained uh, access controls uh, using an, an external service. I also worked on the forking feature that is in Libre. Um, I also worked a lot on, um, on the internationalization stuff uh, together with the, with the Ruben on our team. Um, but generally, Mark Fletcher is better at remembering what I worked on, so <laughs> I get pinged on a lot of things, and that's about it for me. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Francisco, you're up. Hi, everybody. I'm Fran. I'm a senior developer in the backend team. I'm based in Murcia, uh, in the southeast of Spain, the, the, the sunny part of Spain. And I joined GitLab last October, so roughly seven months. Um, like Ben, I'm a maintainer of the customer app, but I'm not so experienced as he is. So please ask him first. <laughs> and lastly, I've been working with some wiki, wiki issues and I like to, to work with it and improve it. And if my spare time, I don't have much, but most of it is for my family. So yes, yes. That's me. <laughs> All right, thanks, Fun. Uh, there's two more people who are not actually part of the platform team, but they are people who are highly involved, involved with everything the platform team works on. Uh, and these are our dear product managers, James Ramsey and Jeremy Watson. Um, as you can see here, they both are kind of responsible for half the stuff the platform backend team works on. So they are involved in pretty much every issue and every Slack channel, uh, every feature that you'll see uh, covered in the rest of this um, function group update. So let me get to that. What have we been up to in the last uh, six weeks? Uh, I skipped. La I, you know, switched my FGU with, um, with 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 whoever was last week because I couldn't do it last week. So it's been six weeks since the last iteration, and since then we since then we have released GitLab 10.6 on March 22nd, with a bunch of things contributed by the platform team. And a nice thing is that now you'll actually be able to put a face to those uh, names I have listed here. First of all, CI/CD for external repos. Uh, this was of course covered in depth in that release post. And this is something that James Edwards Jones, Ruben, as well as Tiago. Um, contributed large parts of the backend code too. Then we have a low mo allow modification of fork merge request branch by project maintainers, which was built by Bob. External authorization control, which was a, an effort that spanned two or three releases. And also Bob worked on primarily, uh, we have project import and export APIs and some other import export related improvements that were contributed by James Lopez. And of course, uh, we have a lot more that we contributed to 10.6 in, uh, for example, bug fixes, performance, uh, this kind of stuff. And you can find this if you follow that little link to more. Um, we also finalized development of GitLab 10.7 last Friday. Uh, normally the feature freeze is the seventh, but of course we don't work on weekends. So the feature freeze took place on the sixth. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we actually built for 10.7 in one of the next few slides. But next, I want to go to what's going to happen today. In about 45 minutes, uh, we're going to kick, well, we've already kicked off development of GitLab 10.8 uh, today, but in about 45 minutes, the public kickoff call will take place where my, the two product managers I just refer, refer to will have the uh, honor of telling the world about what's going to go into GitLab 10.8 from a platform perspective. So I could cover that there. Of course, I have a pretty good idea of what's going to go into that release, but I'll, uh, I don't want to 
steal their thunder. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about GitLab 10.7 though, which we rele will release on April 22nd, and which, like I mentioned, we finished up uh, just before the weekend. First of all, we hope to get the first iteration of basic group level single sign-on for GitLab to come out using SAML. And like James already mentioned in his little introduction, this is something he spent a lot of time working on over the last couple of months. Um, and if you want to know a little bit more about what this entails and what it will be able to do in the first iteration, I suggest you check out that link. Uh, we will also so be launching a feature called Project Batches, which Francisco worked on, which will allow you to um, specify a image URL with some parameters, as well as a web URL with some parameters uh, for badges like the CI status, the code quality, things like this, that will be displayed on the product homepage right by the product description. Uh, in the past, this would be added in the readme in, uh, by a lot of projects, and this is still a good place to edit because it you know, transfers wherever the repository is shipped. Whoever downloads it will have those badges available. Uh, but on GitLab.com, this will often um, turn out to be below the fold of the initial load of, load of a project homepage. So we wanted to bring those a little bit more into view right where the project title and description are located. We are also adding the ability to restrict modification of specific protected branches to admins. James also referred to this a moment ago. Uh, and this will allow companies to set up certain protections that will not be able to be overridden on a project level by an individual project owner or group owner because uh, only admins will be able to unrestrict certain branches. For example, if a company has very strict control over what can and cannot go in master and who needs to sign off on things before it can go into master, they don't want project members to be able to uh, you know, temporarily remove the protection just to sneak something in. Um, that's something that Jameson worked work on, like I mentioned. We are also adding uh, Git LFS objects to project exports. And of course, we're also gonna import these. This is related to the project export import feature, which I referred to a few moments ago, where you can transfer an entire GitLab project and all of its related data from one GitLab instance to another. Or even you can you know, import it into the same GitLab instance, but then you'll end up with a complete clone of the original project, including all of the issue and merge request data. Um, in the past, we didn't include Git LFS objects, which me meant that an imported object uh, project would technically be corrupt because if you checked it out, you would get all kinds of errors about missing files. Uh, but now we are actually downloading all of these Git LFS objects into the archive that you can download when you're exporting. And then when you import that archive, we will make sure that those Git LFS objects are uh, you know, properly placed, located, so that the Git project will be able to use them. And we are also adding an API uh, to export a project and automatically upload it to a URL. We've had an API to export a project uh, since 10.6, and we've had the functionality to export a project for a while. But right now, if you export a project, uh, of course, the product will be generated in the background. The export will be generated in the background. And when it's finished, this file will be um, stored somewhere on GitLab server, and you will be sent a download link by email, uh, which works fine if this is a user interface feature used by uh, an individual user of GitLab. But if you want to automate something around project exports, you don't want it to you know, you don't want to have to read an IMAP email inbox to find the actual download URL. And even if you could check the API to find the download URL, you would need to pull it continuously, which is, of course, also far from ideal. So from 10.7 on, you will be able to specify an upload URL, which could be to an S3 bucket or some other location. Um, and the export will automatically be uploaded to that location when it is complete. And of course, 10.7 will have a lot more stuff that we worked on. And you can find it in that more link. Um, then on May 7th, we'll plan to finalize the development of GitLab 10.8. And then on May 8th, we'll start uh, developing GitLab 11. And I'm sure that before then, there will be a big kickoff where the product team will uh, tell everyone what's going to be in that monumental 11.0 release. So that's the last five weeks, next five weeks. And you all get a chance to get to know the team a little bit better. Any questions at this point? If not, I'm going to count down from 15, 10, 5, and nothing. So that means you all get 15 minutes of your day back. Um, see some of you, I'll see some of you in the team call and everyone else, I'll see you in five weeks when the next platform update is up. Yes, do. Have a nice day, everyone. Hello.